How's she going, my son? And welcome back to Undertale. Now, you're probably going to notice something. This isn't the, uh... <coughs> Excuse me. This isn't the, uh, lesser dog post I left you guys on when, um... Uh... Mm, geez, excuse me, throat real tickly. Mm. This isn't the lesser dog area that I left you guys on when I left the last episode. That's because I recorded several episodes in a row, um, on that previous save, and I didn't actually get the footage. I only got my audio. I had my OBS set to record Warframe. It still records your audio perfectly fine, but it was and it was picking up the game's audio perfectly fine, but it wasn't picking up the game's visuals because it was looking for space ninjas when I was playing a small child in the underground. God damn it. <laughs> so it took me a few days to get over that, because uh, I don't take failure very well. At least at least when it's completely on myself. When it's just like, you know, random RNG bullshit, you're like, well, pff, what could I have done there, right? But when it's something I personally screwed up on, it hurts. It hurts real bad. So, I, you know, took a little bit of time off. I did a Darkest Dungeon video, and um, I might have mentioned this whole screw-up in that video as well. But I decided to give it another shot today. I'm going to record one episode at a time. In fact, I'm going to double-check something here. Okay. Brief cut, because I had to alt-tab out. It does look like she's recording, so hopefully this will work better than it did last time. Now, I have kept everything the same as I had in that last file, except for the lesser dog thing, because I felt it was a sin not to pet the poor little bugger, instead of running away from him like I did last time. Anyway, um, I'm probably going to just skip to the end of the papyrus fight, and where I kill him, and then show you what changes in the town of Snowden when Papyrus is dead. Because because if you don't have everyone else gone, and it's like, you know, it's not just a genocide run, um, you actually get some different responses out of the NPCs as well. So, uh, let's see that, shall we? But anyway, until then, I'll see you, I'll see you after the cut. I'm back a little early. How can I forget the bridge section? This is my last chance to do some good Papyrus voice acting. I mean, I could voice act the fight, but, I mean, I'm just gonna skip through it. But, uh, you know, this section's pretty good, too. I need a moment to get into character. Human! 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 Spaghetti! Sans? Okay. <clears throat> Human! This is your final and most dangerous challenge! Behold! The Gauntlet of Deadly Terror! Hey, Toby. <laughs> When I say the word, it will fully activate. Cannons will fire, spikes will swing, blades will slice. Each part will swing violently up and down. Only the tiniest chance of victory will remain. Are you ready? Because I am about to do it. Well, what's the holdup? Hold up? What hold up? I'm, I'm about to activate it now. That, uh, doesn't look very activated. Well, this challenge, it seems, maybe too easy to defeat the human with. Yeah, we can't use this one. I am a skeleton with standards. My puzzles are very fair, and my traps are expertly cooked. But this method is too direct. No class at all. Away it goes. Phew. What are you looking at? This was another decisive victory for Papyrus. Yeah. Now, since I've done a reset, we're going to get some of the you've played the game before but didn't finish it text. So, for example... Here, I'll give you some advice about fighting my brother. Don't. Capiche? Anyway, back after we fight his brother. You're blue now. That's my attack. <laughs> Oh, also something I forgot to show off last time. His stats are higher. I mean, as we all know from my previous testing, check stats are bullshit. But the fact that Toby actually bothered to change them is fairly interesting. And... Off with his head. <laughs> ah. Alas, poor Papyrus. Well, at least I still have my head.
Okay, so, we've killed Toriel, we've killed Papyrus. Now, we get to have a little look at the changes made to Snowden due to the death of Papyrus. Now, I checked the library in the previous recording, there was no difference there. First difference I noticed was these gentlemen. Just now, I felt my smile falter for a moment. What's wrong? It just feels like, like everything is getting worse and worse. Hmm, usually that skeleton goes to meet with Undyne about now. Where is he? I can feel our political system crumbling apart. No music. Because remember, that's Sans' theme. Uh, hey, hey, isn't Sansie supposed to come swinging in right about now? Come on, Sansie, you're the life of the party. Hmm, this is around the time that Sans comes in. Then, a little bit later, his brother comes in, irritated. Yes, his brother, Papyrus. He's an interesting fellow. He always orders a glass of milk. He says it's full of strong bones. Where are those skeletons? I wanted to get a bone from them. Where's Sans? He's supposed to give me a pat on the head. Papyrus? Is that you? Come on. Where the heck is Sans? He told me he had some bait I could use. Though it was probably some kind of prank. But I wanted to know what the prank was. <laughs> Grilby is getting nervous. Sans is his best customer, and he hasn't shown up at all today. Capital's getting pretty crowded, so I've heard they're going to start moving here. Who knows? Maybe we'll have room. If you're curious, Grillby still does the um, the water joke. Or, well, the, the duck person translates Grillby saying the water joke. I've sent the kids inside. It feels unsafe here today. Now, am I still going to get the wrong number song? Hello? Can I speak to G... Wait a second. Is this the wrong number? Oh, it's the wrong number. The wrong number song. We're very, very sorry that we've got it wrong. Oh, it's the wrong number. The wrong number song. We're very, very sorry that we got it wrong. <laughs> I love the headcanon that a buddy of mine uh, posted to me. Or, uh, or pitched to me, I should say. Um, shortly after I uh, mentioned the wrong number song. That, um, when I in my first playthrough when I got it. Which you can see on the channel. If you're, if you're interested. And, um, the idea that the monsters have to actually, or like, like, it's a cultural obligation. If a monster calls someone and it's the wrong number, they have to sing the wrong number song. And I think that's amusing. It's a carefully decorated tree. Some of the presents are addressed from Santa to various locals. That's strange. There was a present here for Papyrus. Now it's gone. Did someone steal it? Ah, it's so peaceful and quiet. Usually one of those skeletons chases my little cinnamon around. That lady over there seems happy today. Don't know why, but it's sending shivers down my spine. And I did check the two NPC vendors here, but they don't, they don't change. They do not change. Anyway, I'm, uh, where will, I'm, I'm considering another cut. Because, well, we, we all know Sans isn't going to be there for the first Sans date, where he takes you to Grillby's. Um. Yeah, I guess we can make a cut until we get to Undyne for the first time. Yeah, we'll do that. See you in a bit. I actually forgot about this encounter. When I said first Undyne encounter, I was thinking the thing where she first starts chucking spears at you. She is well animated for a sprite game. Admittedly, this game has a lot of really good sprite animation. But Undyne in particular. Yo, did you see the way she was staring at you? That was awesome. I'm so jealous. 
She was just standing there waiting forever. And then you just... Come on. Let's go watch her beat up some bad guys. A feeling of dread hangs over you. But you stay determined. Now this is what I thought of when I was thinking the first encounter with Undyne. Technically she doesn't see you the first time. But now she does. Now we're gonna have a little fun here. It's hard to notice at first, but her spears pick up in volume and speed the longer this encounter takes. To the point where they just will fire an absolutely ridiculous amount of them at ridiculous machine gun speeds and it's fairly hilarious. Oh crap. I was not paying attention. Oh crap. Ah. I don't think it resets if she hits you. This is the best way to rack it up. She can't hit you because you keep going back and forth. Like, she literally starts queuing up another set of spears when she's still launching the first one. That's how fast it ends up getting. <laughs> oh, this is kind of really bad for business, though, just to get through the area. Oh god. Oh god. Yeah, she's literally, like, chain-firing them now. <laughs> she's getting so frustrated. <laughs> oh, God! Oh, no! Oh, man, I'm not gonna really get through. Is she still firing them at, like, super speed? I don't know if they're speeding up here as well. Yeah, she can't hit you at this point anyway. Because we eventually learn if you go back here with Undyne on your, on your calling list, and then we also learn that from Alphys that this is a total bunk, but, you know, Alphys, or Undyne believes the seaweed is important for scientific reasons, but Undyne is just making, or not Undyne, Alphys is just making ice cream with it. Don't know how you make ice cream out of seaweed, but it's apparently a thing. Oh, something in my eye. Yo, did you see that? Undyne just touched me. I'm never washing my face ever again. Yo, did you notice? She seemed really mad about something. She looked like she was gonna blast me to pieces. But, uh, then she decided to put me down. Yo, there's always next time, right? Let's go! That, ladies and gentlemen, is the very definition of a fanboy. <laughs> okay, we've got a little bit of uh, affordable cut time here, so I'll see you in a bit. Welcome back. We are at the second Undyne encounter, and I do believe this this one has that same sort of like enrage timer mechanic as well, because I I think it does anyway. I, I did it, but I don't really remember if it was super fast or if it was just kind of what happens anyway. Ah, I thought I'd get through it before it spiked up. And I'm pretty sure with this encounter, she cools off a bit if she hits you. Come on. Come on, stop trying to hit me and hit me. Did. Come on.
As you can see, it's definitely picking up in tempo. Oh, oh, come on! That would barely graze my arse cheek. Uh. Ah. <laughs> I'm a little curious about this, this upcoming section near the end here. This is more like a maze where, like, it has, like, a set... This is just her going nuts. Oh crap. As we all know, Undyne does not have a lot of patience. You know, I always kind of wondered, why doesn't she just kill you here? Like, instead of being indirect about it and making you fall off the bridge, why doesn't she just, like, spear you right then and there? Or start the fight right there and there, and then you can't run away? You know, it's, it's an interesting sort of flaw in her logic, but I mean, I guess she is someone who runs on anime logic for most of her, most of her living life, so... Living life. You know, most of her waking life, so, uh... You know, she's probably doing it for dramatic effect when she really shouldn't. <laughs> I also love the fact that Toby kept the sound fonts on everyone's speech consistent. Because then you can go back to this section and be like, Oh, that's who was talking to me. And you can start putting all the facts together. But something you can't really do in this game without multiple playthroughs. Or at least watching somebody else's other playthrough and like putting the pieces together with what you learned in yours. Which is interesting. Piles of garbage. There are quite a few brands you recognize. There's a pile of yellow names in the trash pile. <laughs> yes, I kept the pink names. Because I am highly amused by them. The waterfall here seems to flow from the ceiling of the cavern. Occasionally, a piece of trash will flow through and fall into the bottomless abyss below. Viewing this endless cycle of worthless garbage, it fills you with determination. Anyway... I think it's enough for one episode for today. I Again, I don't want to push my luck too much with this whole recording snafu business I've been having lately. So, uh, you know, Twitter, Tumblr, subscription, description is... Or, yeah, subscription in the description as usual. Subscription somewhere on screen. Please, engage in the Twitter and obviously subscribe, but engage in the Twitter because it is a far more accurate way to get updates on my content, which when I am doing content, which, again, I apologize for falling off the wagon a little bit and getting a little... A little too sensitive about my own failures, about, you know, losing recordings and such. Um, but yeah, the, being on the Twitter is a lot more uh, in-your-face update immediately than the YouTube subscription boxes, because if you were to look up Undertale... Because if you start watching Undertale stuff like on my channel, you start getting Undertale stuff that other people have done. You start getting, like, just other people's channels and such that are similar content. And I get lost in the shuffle because I'm one of the smaller channels. You know, YouTube likes to throw its big people at you because that's there's the people... Obviously, they're the people who make the most ad revenue. <clears throat> you know, they're not actively doing it, but that's kind of the way the algorithm works. But anyway, thank you. Uh, so, you know, there isn't much you can do, but, you know, fight it actively. So anyway, thank you all so much for watching, and uh, ciao for now.